Hi guys, Raven Song here. I have got. I'm gonna open this one now. This one is a independent deck, and I got in on the last of the first edition because she's getting ready to go um, run it, do a second second edition on it. Um, and she had a few leftovers, and she uh, she opened it up. I believe this is yeah, this is Forager's Daughter Tarot. Very well packaged. Very well packaged. I did get the deck and the book together. Even though I'm not a big book reader, I like to have the sets. If I'm going to buy something, I like to have the sets. As long as it's not crazy expensive more. And this wasn't. I mean, it's another $10 or $15, which to me that was fine. That was fine. That was fine. That was fine. So it's an independent deck by, um, Jessica Lee Howard. Jessica Lee Howard. First edition. Yeah, it was 50, it was 10 bucks. No, she picked up. No, 55 was the deck plus the guidebook. I think it was 45 for just the deck. I can't remember. Something like that. It was like I said, it was reasonable to just throw the book on here also. Very well packaged here. Very, very well packaged. I'm very impressed. I like that when people put effort into protecting what we purchase. Um, it's very disappointing when you get something smashed because somebody didn't take a little extra effort. Um, I thought the box was an overkill at first, but then I realized the book was probably taking up more room. <gasps> Ooh, I like the packaging. Love the packaging. Love the color tones on this. I wasn't, I'm not sure how, this might be just one of those. Look at that, it matches my shirt. Ain't I in sync? Yeah, ain't that pretty? Anyways, um, I don't know how well this is going to read, but it, it's kind of like, um, the Layla and Olive decks. They're just so gorgeous. They're, the color palette is so pretty that I couldn't resist. I just couldn't resist them. And, you know, even though I don't use them much, I couldn't get rid of them. They're just too beautiful. But I do take them out now and then. They're, 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 I use them at home. But I have a feeling this one might fall into that same category. Um, beautiful, but not necessarily functional for, for me. But oh, I just couldn't resist. Could not resist. I mean, it's a basic two-part box with the thumb holes, which is great. But it's good quality. It's, it's pretty. I like it. Nothing fancy on the inside. I like it. I like it. Look at those gorgeous copper edges. Copper. I love it. I'm going to just get the wrapper off there, and then we'll take a look at the book really quick. I haven't seen any walkthroughs on this one. But I've seen it seen it in imagery on Facebook and um, Instagram a lot. So Forge Your Daughter, Daughter's Tarot Guidebook. It's also by Jessica. Thank you to everyone who has supported this project. The smallest beginnings to, uh, to the very end. An immense thank you to my family who instilled these ideas in me through knowledge and practice. Special thanks to McKinley Helenus Krantz. Oh, is that Krantz? For, for your keen eye and kind words. No, that's not Karen Krantz from Wild Unknown, is it? Maybe. I don't know. The Forager's Daughter Tarot came about as a way for me to express my understanding of the world and from a need to share those experiences with others. 
The images in this deck stem from a deep-seated love for nature, reverence for its beauty and cruelty. My goal for these cards was for everyone to access their message by simply looking at the image and reading the contents, context. But having a guidebook doesn't hurt either. Um, each entry includes a brief summary of the cards, general description of it, uh, intuitive tool. The reader will have their own way of interpreting the cards. That was what I was wondering, is that was the imagery going to portray that meaning? Because it is very plant-based deck, again, plant and animal. Um, it may be one of those that has to be read as more of a pip deck. Um, God, but it's beautiful. So you get a two-page spread, not a whole lot of writing. Um, let's see if I can figure out what that is. U and R. U, new beginnings, in a sense, R. Okay, probably upright and reversed. Um, egg cracked monarchs. It gives you it gives you the meaning of each of the little each symbol that's in the imagery, which I love that, and that's kind of in a quick reference down here at the bottom, where you've got your upright and your reverse, and then each of the the items in there and their quick meaning in there, which is really cool. I like that a lot. That's going to help, um, especially if you're struggling at all. But yeah, you get a, a two-page spread per card. Um, the minors, you only get a page each. But that's okay. It's still still gorgeous. I love it. I think it's going to be really nice. Um, well done, book. Um, got a few blank pages at the back. Doesn't look like there's any spreads. You've got about 125 pages. Yeah, it doesn't look like there's a whole lot of other information other than the cards themselves in here. So um, that's okay. That's okay. Oh, I love that. The cardstock is very similar to make playing cards linen stock, but we've got that, that gorgeous foil and look at those backs. I don't know if you can get that detail. Look at that. It's like moth wings or what are those called? Those lace. What are they called? Lace moths? Lace, lace flies? I can't remember what they're called. Something lace. Wings. And then the roses. Are they roses or lotuses? Looks like they might be more of a lotus than a, than a rose on there. Beautiful, beautiful. So let's go ahead and look at these. Um, this is the Fool. It's got borders, but I think the borders flow right into it. Oh, I, these are stunning. These are stunning. Open the box so I can put them back in. Magician. It's definitely going to be more of a... Well, I can't say that. The Magician. You definitely get that transformation of metamorphosis. I don't know about magician, magician on that. Um, five priestess. It's definitely not going to read as a traditional Waitsmith or any system type deck. I can tell that right now. The Empress. It has more to do with symbolism of items and objects and nature in each of them. Which is basically what she was talking about in the first of the, in the beginning of the book. Really cool. I'm gonna like this. I'm gonna like it. I can tell I'm gonna like it. This will probably be a deck that I use more for myself. Looking at this and thinking about the five cent tarot that I just bought. 
the two have some similar qualities in readability. Not imagery, but necessarily, but readability. And I think this one's a little bit easier to relate to for me. The other one's beautiful, but I don't think it takes me beyond that beauty without reading the words. And this one takes you beyond the beauty. And it doesn't need any words. <laughs> oh, this is stunning. Wow. Justice. Oh my gosh. Cool. The meanings I'm pulling out of this remind me of the Brady Tarot. And they aren't even close to similar in imagery. This is stunning. I'm, I'm thrilled with it. This is beautiful. I am so glad I got this. I am so glad I got it. I haven't bought, I mean, the, the mass market ones that I picked up, these four decks that I was going to go through, um, I only bought those basically for retail. I haven't bought any other decks since but lately I've been tapping in on some new decks that are coming out on Kickstarter. And I'm definitely not making my retail purchase this year. My big retail purchase is in June at INET. So, um, yeah, I've just focused in on like three or four Kickstarters recently. And then this one that was, that was uh, you know kind of a backstock release, last minute release by her because she's getting ready to do another one, which I won't do that Kickstarter. I, I, I'm perfectly happy with the first edition. I don't need a backup of every, every deck that I get. If I get backups, it's usually because they've gone to a mass market and I don't want to destroy my independent copy. Three of Cups. So far, this cup suit can either be read Pipfish or Waitsmith. It's it's pretty. It's very very nicely, very well done. This is interesting. We got the four cups, but the two cups are just reflections. That's kind of deep in itself. That's kind of deep. This is beautiful. This is really beautiful. Six cups. Seven of cups. Love it. Love it. She did a good job of, of working the weight smith into it. I was I was afraid it was going to be more pippish like Layla and Olives, but no, nope, this one this is much easier to read. I like it, I like it, I like it. Oh. And the color palette is just, just definitely up my sleeve. I'm just now noticing something on the colors. This is Cups, and it's got kind of that lavendery, periwinkle blue color on the bordering, which matches that purple gray color, heather, a heather color. You know, it complements it beautifully. But I just noticed, we got this lovely periwinkle. Each suit has its own color border. I like that. I like that a lot. It's a nice touch. So this is like your heather green. And it looks like your earth is probably a dusty ochre color. And the red or the fire 
is like a rusty, a muted rust color. Very well done. Um, some people might go crazy on this because it looks like the suit of Earth has has been trimmed off, trimmed improperly. Maybe all of them have. One side, it might make some people crazy. One side's a little wider than the other. If you can see that. There's a little bit more green on this side than on this side. Interesting. Let me take a look quick, quickly. It's consistent, but it's definitely there. Maybe that's why these ones were held back, too. Um, I don't know. I don't know what the reasoning behind it, but suddenly she had like 200 copies left of the original um, that she listed last week. I'm just so glad I got it. I was really getting, I got that that regret thing for not jumping on it originally. So I'm glad I did get in on it now. I, love, I always love bees. I love bees. Nine of Pentacles. I need to go out and paint my beehives. The weather's been nice. I sh I've been fighting myself all week because I've got plenty of time um, to go out and paint beehives and paint my front fence. <laughs> I keep finding other things to do. Let's pour candles instead. Let's go rehang the lights on the deck instead. Let's work on this journal instead. Let's go watch foreign series on Netflix <laughs> that we have to read captions so it takes twice as long to watch. <laughs> I mean, excuse after excuse after excuse I can come up with for the things, for some things, and it just, it's, it's not good. It's not good. I'm going to have to do it. Well, I've only got three more weeks of this, uh, this trying to find things to do thing, and then I have a feeling shit's going to hit the fan at work and I'm going to be... I'm going to be busy doing lots of new sets of nails <laughs> come May 1st. So I've only got like three weeks. I better knuckle down after this weekend's uh, snow. Hopefully it'll get warm again for a while. I like that. That is beautiful. Three of Swords. Just about all the ones with the birds have always... Um, for the Three of Swords have always struck me really, I don't know, there's a visceral feel to them. Whether they're actually being penetrated or being grabbed, like the Marielle Three of Swords, the original. I love that. That deck is, well, that's my soul deck, so. Anyways, that's cool. Hibernation there. Five of Swords. Six of Swords. Eight of Swords. This is beautiful. I'm really, I'm really impressed with this. I'm so glad I got in on it. I've probably said that about 30 times now in this video. <laughs> Can't think of a lot more to say. This is stunning. But I hate leaving you guys in silence too. I'm really starting to lose my light. I need to get a little closer here. Ooh, that's beautiful. That is gorgeous. Six 
little ones. Twirly birds. That's what we call the maple tree seed pods. Twirly birds. You throw them in the air and they spin to the ground. <laughs> nice. Very pleased with this deck. I think it's just stunning. It's an eye catcher. I mean, what you put into the meanings of the cards is up to you, and that's um, how deep you can go to read for somebody else or yourself and pull yourself through it and make sense of it and relate it to your life and your situation. Um, but this one is, is, is definitely a stunner to look at on your table and then it's up to you to, to, to find its meaning. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. I love that forager's daughter, Jessica Lee Howard. Stunning, absolutely stunning. It's considered a 2020 deck too, so that's really cool. So it only just came out, and then she probably just finished, that's probably what it was, she finished off sending out all the pre-orders and Kickstarter stuff and got to the end and then decided she needed to do another run. I bet you that's what happened. And so she decided to, to go ahead and release the, the her, what she was holding back from after filling all the original orders. I bet you that's what it was. So cool. I'm glad I got in on it. I love it. I think it's absolutely stunning. I'm gonna take a. I'm gonna pull a tab from Modern Metaphysical Man's book right now. Be kind to everybody. Be kind to people you don't know. You don't know their situation. You don't know what they've been through. The woman that takes her kids to the grocery stores may not have anybody else to watch them. You know, um, people buying gardening equipment and things like that at the stores or not wearing masks. You know, they have their reasons behind it too. 